morning, everybody. Um, as you can see behind me, we've got some stuff done on the barn since the last time we looked at the front of it. And as you can see around the roof trim, I had to redo some things. Um, I started looking at how I was running the siding up to the edges of the roof. And now this barn, the look I'm going for on this barn, for better or for worse, there's arguments both ways. And there's going to be a lot of you guys are going to say I'm stupid for not putting overhangs on this thing. But I'm kind of going for the old school, old, old timber frame barn look that um, you see a lot um, and those barns that were made back in the old days and a lot of times those barns really didn't have overhangs per se they just kind of had the roof came right down to the walls and I understand the importance of overhangs um, I've had a lot of people comment why I didn't put overhangs on the barn or actually on the horse shed um, but you know on the house I built where we're living I've got two foot overhangs on that so I understand the importance of those it's just not the look I'm going for so consequently um, because there's really not going to be any overhangs per se um, the reason why the roof isn't on yet is because the roof trim has to go off of the siding especially on the eaves so when I put the eave flashing on for the bottom of the steel roof the siding really has to be on even the board and batten has to be on because the flashing gauges off of the finished siding, basically. And so that's kind of the main reason why the roof isn't on yet, or why I haven't started on the roof yet, is because I'm still trying to get the siding done. So, um, that being said, my original plan for the siding, the boards weren't quite long enough to, to 45 them up as high as I wanted to, to fit into the tapered eave board that I had on there before. And when I was running the siding up the gable end, it just, it just wasn't sitting right with me. So I started looking at it and thinking about it and realized what I had to do. And what I had to do is trim off every board that I'd already put on, um, which was a lot of fun hanging off the edge of the roof doing that. And then I had to take off the original Eve boards that I used for nailers for the steel roof put on solid pieces because the 45 bevel that I put on was basically going to leave a giant hole where I wouldn't have any fastening um, space for the steel roof flashing. Um, how that taper came down and where the siding was coming up it wasn't long enough to taper fully to the top and so I had a big void there and then once I put the battens on the void, void would have been bigger. It's kind of a long convoluted problem. So anyways if you look up there now um, you'll see that I've got two by sixes on the gable ends that are stretched out two inches over the edge of the timber frame. That will give me space to run the siding up to the bottom of those plus the battens and then a trim piece on top of that and that will give me a small bit of overhang on the gables and it will trim that out nicely. And on the eave end, on the eaves, basically I replaced the beveled piece of that piece of board that I, the beveled two by four, excuse me that I had there before with a solid piece and so that outside corner that now comes all the way down is going to give me a place to give me a solid surface to mount the eave flashing and it'll give me a, a definite termination point for the boards and the battens and that's what I really needed it was a solid termination point for both of those on both the gable ends and the eaves and so that's what we've done yesterday I didn't film that because you know, I had squalls moving through, thunderstorm squalls and rain and wind, and um, I was dodging thunderstorms and rain all day, and it was really windy, and I was hanging on the edge of the roof, um, quite frankly, to try and deal with the camera and worry about the camera, and so it didn't blow over in the wind or get wet, and it just wasn't a good conducive environment for filming, and it was barely good enough for me to be even be up on that roof. Um, and quite frankly, I just needed to buckle down and just get after it and do it. Um, it took a long time to get it done. I had uh, a lot of time consuming things I had to do to redo things and trim boards up there and trim all the siding and trim off my purlins and it was just kind of a pain. So anyways, I didn't film it, um, but to make a long story short, that's what we have now. I think it looks great. I think I've got 
a definite plan now for how I'm going to terminate the siding into the steel roof and so I think it's going to be much better in the long run. Also if you look at that termination point um, on the gable end I've got a piece of steel flashing in there and that's the same A606 rusty steel flashing that we're using on the board and batten and the steel roof. So yes the rust may drip on the siding a little bit that's fine. Uh, that's kind of the look I'm going for anyway and I decided to do that in the front to get a more definite termination point and it's going to look pretty cool. I had to kind of decipher on how to terminate the end of that flashing because the way the corners are coming up on the barn because there's no overhangs it's a little bit more difficult so I had to terminate that transition piece um, just because I'm weaving the outside corner um, so I think I figured out a pretty good plan on how to terminate that and have it not leak. So we had to put some butyl flashing behind the siding and then seal it with more butyl, butyl sealant. Um, it's not the best solution, but I think it will probably work. So um, that's what we're doing there. It's a much more beautiful day today. The wind is not blowing 900 miles an hour, so I think we can get some filming done. So let's get the gable end on this barn.
Well, there you have it, guys. The boards on the barn are done. So I'm pretty sure I have enough boards left over to cut the battens. In any event, I'm just going to rip battens out of the rest of them I have. The reason why I didn't kind of do the battens as I go is because I'm kind of short on space right now. And to be quite honest, we're kind of partly living in our where my wood shop is supposed to be. So to get my table saw out, because it's a big you know, professional contractor's cabinet saw. Um, and to set it up and cover everything with sheets so we don't get everything dusty, it's kind of a big operation. So I wanted to just kind of get everything, all the boards up first and then I'll set everything up and I'll rip all the battens, um, get them all cut. And uh, so we have just one big operation doing that. So basically that's, that's what we're gonna do. Um, as you can see, as I was putting that up, because of that, because I redid the roof structure and, and how those purlins overlap and those end 2x6s on the gable ends, it ties it in nicely and it's going to make a much, a much cleaner transition to the steel roof. Um, and as soon as I get the battens on, at least the eaves, then I can start putting on the steel roof, I think. I got to get the steel roof on. It's not going to quit raining. Um, truth be told, I kind of looked around for a roofing contractor to kind of put it on for me. I know, but you know, I'm just so behind. Um, it's taken me so long to do this um, that I was kind of seeing if I could just get someone to do it real fast. And I can't. Um, everyone's busy or Nobody can get to me till fall or nobody wants to put on steel. So I guess I'm doing it. <laughs> so, um, but we'll get it done. I'll figure out some way to, to get it done. I figured out everything else so far, so I'm sure I can figure that out. But in any event, it looks pretty good. It's starting to look like something. So hang in there. We'll see you next time.